Hey, it's a little official cult and I'm doing something a little bit differently today. So recently I've heard a lot of people talk about how they don't feel as productive as other people, they don't feel like they're getting stuff done as much as they are and I constantly hear people say, you know, oh, and how on earth do you do all this kind of stuff? Not to, to me, I hear it sometimes to myself, but like uh, to a whole bunch of other people. So I wanted to take a minute to talk about it and to kind of give my opinion on. So this is my opinion on why you're maybe feeling that way, how to try and stop feeling that way and how you can actually get stuff done. If you know me, you know I am a very strong believer of the bullet journal method. Uh, my brand is called Bujo Cult. I'm not gonna preach to you here about why I think you need to start a bullet journal. That's for another video. But I will probably mention it a lot as it's what I use to organise my time. But the methods that I talk about here, you can use in any way that suits you. So whether it's just taking notes in any kind of notebook, post-it notes, um, probably less post-it notes, somewhere you can keep it. Uh, or an app on your phone, in your notes folder, anything like that. But you should also totally start a bullet journal, I'm just saying. Okay, now that's out of the way. I'd also like to prefix with who I am and why I'm talking about this. So my name, my actual name is Lilius. Uh, I go by Lil or Lily or anything really. I am a costume designer and maker and a freelance wardrobe assistant. Uh, specifically in the cabaret drag burlesque scene. I make loud, unique, ridiculous outfits for loud, unique, ridiculous people. Now, I'm also a mum of two and for a while during that time that I was setting up my costuming brand Cage Crinoline, I was also at college for two years studying textile design. So I have gotten very used <laughs> to keeping as many juggling balls in the air as possible. I can't catch a ball to save myself, actually. That's a really bad analogy. More like plate spinning, yeah? Spinning loads of plates, keeping them all going. I've gotten really used to doing that over the years. Now, one of the ways that I learned how to do that was through bullet journaling, but another massive thing that helped me do that was getting my medication. I have cyclothymia, which is a form of bipolar affective disorder, and when you're riding a roller coaster of moods constantly, uh, you don't get as much done as when you're a little bit more stable. So if you feel like there's a strong underlying issue on why you're not getting stuff done, I'm not the person to talk to. And that kind of conveniently brings me on to my first topic, which is your mindset. Now, I've seen this shared a lot, and I think a lot of people kind of know this phrase now of uh, what you're seeing online is somebody's highlight reel. You shouldn't um, compare your real life to somebody else's highlight reel. Something like that. I can't remember the exact quote, but that one, you know it. So there's definitely an element of that, I think, when we are seeing somebody else's results and thinking they must be working so much harder than us to achieve those results. And I feel like on top of that, we also all live different lives. So I have two children um, and I used to be really bad at comparing how much I was doing with people who didn't have children. Now this was even as well back when I only had one. Um, a child takes up a lot of your time, like a lot of your time. Um, and you're constantly interrupted in whatever you're doing and you are constantly tired forever, especially when they're young, just constant level of sleepiness and you're having to juggle a million and one other things to do with just having a child. You know, your nurseries and school things, the all the dates and stuff you have to remember to do with that stuff. Their routine, how it fits in with your routine, like, ugh. For people who don't have kids as well, you maybe have other uh, responsibilities and other things that are taking up your time. Sometimes I see people who work full time comparing their lives with somebody who does what they want to do for a living full time. So, well, of course that person's gonna get more done. You've only got your evenings or your weekends or something like that to work on it. So my step one for mindset, you've probably heard this stuff before. So how I would suggest that you use what you've heard is to step back and take a look at what your goals are. Side note, <laughs> I'm really starting to hate the term smash your goals. I don't know if there's a slight innuendo about it or, um, or if it just feels a little bit judgy. I don't know, but I've decided I don't like the term anymore. So we're not gonna smash our goals. 
We're going to gently take them off some lists. So step one is to work out what your goals are, right? Write them down. So start with the huge, stupid, huge ones, the ones that you think you're never going to be able to achieve, the ones that feel like they're never going to be within your reach, all of that kind of stuff. The, the massive ones. So for an example, for me, one of my massive goals is to have a premises. I want to have a huge studio space where I can have people who work for me and I can be um, taking on lots and lots of commissions for costumes and being able to delegate tasks about them to other people so that I'm designing them and I've still got a hand in making them but you know here's a hem <laughs> I don't have to sit there for four hours doing like eight circle skirts like I can I can delegate that to somebody else and I can concentrate on what's important for the business I would also like to be producing costume products, smaller uh, costume items that people can be buying, and I want to be running Bougeot Cult at the same time. I want to have a stationary line, I want to have all of this stuff. Like, these are huge goals when you consider that I started up Bougeot Cult, like, what, um, the beginning of July-ish? No, mid-June. Mid-June. Okay. And we're now mid-July. So I've been doing this for a month. That's that's a stupidly huge goal, okay? But if I don't get that out of my system and I don't write it down, then I don't know that's what I need. And realistically, those things are achievable if I work stupidly hard at them and I do the rest of the stuff that I preach to other people about. You know that practice what you preach thing, yeah? Yeah. So you've written down all your goals. You've started with the stupid, huge, ridiculous ones all the way down to the ones that you think you could maybe even achieve in the next couple of months, right? Next, you need to look at what tasks do you need to achieve to get those goals. So for an example, a goal of mine that I want to achieve in the next probably couple of weeks actually is to release a sticker box. And the sticker box will have everything that you need for setting up a spread in your bullet journal for the month. That means that you can just buy the box, it's all there, bish bash bosh, your bullet journal setup is super pretty, it's looking cute, you're going to be aesthetically pleased by your journal spreads without having to do much work. So to do that, the tasks that I have to do, I've already done some of those sticker sheets. So the next one I need to do is to do a, a days of the week kind of planner essential sticker sheet. I also need to um, order some bookmarks for the kind of executive box version. Um, and I'm waiting for my badges to arrive in the post for that. Oh, I also need to buy black paper for part of the packaging. Uh, and I think that's probably it. So those are really small tasks to be able to get that done. And you'll find that the more you break down those goals into smaller and smaller tasks, the much more manageable it is. And then that way you're not overwhelmed by everything that you have to do because you know, well, this is what I'm getting done in the next couple of weeks. So I just need to do that, that and that. Now that you have all those goals written down and you have a kind of roadmap of the sort of tasks that you're going to need to do to be able to achieve those goals, let it all go wrong. <laughs> it will all go wrong. It's all going to go wrong. Sorry. <laughs> the things that you've written down as goals, they're probably going to change. You're probably going to decide to do something else or uh, something else is going to inspire you to take your business in a different direction, or perhaps your life changes, you have a child, you change job, whatever, um, and you're going to have to reapproach those goals and reimagine them, and when you do that, reapproach those tasks and reimagine them. Your life is forever changing, and you have absolutely no idea. <laughs> 2020. You have absolutely no idea what's about to get thrown your way and you need to be prepared to let everything change. And for some people that's not a problem at all, for some people that's a real big problem. I know I for one am not great with the change. Um, I'm okay with change in this bigger scale of things, I'm not great on day to day change. <laughs> if I have a plan for the day and something happens and I can't get my plan done, I'm stressed. We'll get there, practice, yeah? Okay, cool. Now from writing down your goals and from looking at what tasks you'd have to achieve to get to those goals, you're probably going to have noticed something that's coming up for you, uh, either emotionally or um, something practically holding you back from achieving those things. So either you're going to be looking at it and you're going to think, oh, but how on earth am I going to get this done because I don't have any time to do it. Maybe you work a full-time job and are a parent or... Um, maybe you feel like you are you just don't have that free time to be able to dedicate into your 
side hustle. I don't know why I'm using... <laughs> Your small business. So that's come up. Great. Cool. Write that down. Maybe emotionally things have come up for you where you're feeling overwhelmed by all of that. Um, or you're feeling like you're not good enough or that you can't be good enough. Um, cool. Okay. Write that down. Those things that have come up for you, they are valid. It's very easy to say to somebody, uh, if they're saying like, oh, but I don't feel good enough, to say that, oh, but you are. It's like, but that's not the problem. The problem is that you don't feel that way. It's not whether you are or not, it's your emotions. So me and my, my coven, <laughs> my, my bourgeois cult friend group, um, we have a saying, uh, start by mags, which is your emotions are valid. So as soon as we start saying something like, oh, I know I shouldn't, but I feel blah, 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 and go, no, mm, mm, mm. your emotions are valid. How you feel is important. How you feel is valid. Your emotions mean something, especially to you. They are what's driving you to do anything that you're doing. So emotionally, if something's come up whilst you're looking at those goals, which you, you feel like it's holding you back, make a goal based on that. So if it's that you feel like you're not good enough, okay, you feel like you're not good enough. Maybe attend a life drawing class. Maybe join Skillshare. Um, there's Procreate things and stuff on that. I get that feeling, especially as I've just started <laughs> in this community. It's really kind of overwhelming and scary sometimes. I feel like my illustration skills are nowhere near good enough. So for my birthday, I asked for a book called, I think it's Beginner's Guide to Procreate. I'll link it below. It's absolutely brilliant. It's taught me so many new things. Um, if you see on my Instagram feed, uh, the, the witch school illustration, that was massively, massively from going through a tutorial in that book. So I looked into all the illustrators who contributed to that book and I found one who I really, really love called uh, Simone Grunewald. Simone Grunewald. Vault? Grunewald. Grunewald? Grunewald. My German's not great, okay? <laughs> On Instagram she's smooth vars, alright? She also released a book uh, called Sketch Every Day and because I was doing the 100 day sketch challenge I was like, well 100 days of drawing challenge, I was like brilliant! This! So whenever I'm feeling that overwhelming um, I'm not good enough I go back to the books, um, or I look on YouTube, I look on courses. I don't want to be repeating the narrative to myself of you're not good enough. But I also don't want other people around me just going, yes you are, because I won't believe them and I won't feel that. And I, you know it, you don't believe it when people say that you are. You think thanks, but no I'm not. <laughs> Whereas if I can change that narrative from my, for myself, from you're not good enough, to maybe you're not good enough yet then there's something actionable that I can do about that. Whether or not it's true, doesn't matter. Because there's no downside to it. Just because I take an hour or two study time to make that feeling lessen, there's no harm in that. If anything, that's brilliant, fantastic, I'm working on myself. What was that? If you find that you've written down something that's more practical that's holding you back from achieving those goals, think about what a goal that you could set is that could maybe help alleviate some of that. So perhaps it's that you have two kids and you're not finding enough time to put into your business. Maybe you could work out something with like a childminder or with your partner or with a parent um, to have two hours child free that week. That's two hours, a lot can be done in two hours. You've got two hours a week, that's brilliant. And you know that if those two hours are just for that, you're gonna be super focused. And that kind of brings me perfectly onto the next part, which is to keep it short and sweet. It's so much better and so much more productive to work for short periods of time where you're super focused than to sit around all day kind of working and not really getting much done or working really hard on something that's not actually getting you anywhere closer to where you want to be. Now I'm so guilty of this one. So guilty of this one. I could work all day but actually not really get much done. Yeah, whereas if I've only got a couple of hours to work in, I am efficient. Now a great way to go about doing this is to block your tasks. 
So you need to send an email, you need to research the price of bookmarks, you need to watch something on how to make a Pinterest pin. <laughs> Those are all three things that you can do sitting down on a computer. You need to design such and such, you need to draw such and such, you need to... Blah, blah. They're all things that you're going to do on Procreate on your iPad. This is very specific for me. <laughs> but do you see what I mean here? There's some things that you can do in one place, all together, really quickly, really easily. And you need to work out how you can block those tasks. So for me, sometimes I have studio days, where I'm in here, where I'm doing everything that I need to be doing in the studio. Sometimes though, I need to get stuff done that I usually do in the studio, but my husband's working late that night or something, I need to be doing it in the house. So I block them into two separate groups of things. There's the studio things that I need to do in the studio, and there's studio things that actually I can take into the house. So if I'm working on a commission through here, if I've got the overlocker and the sewing machine and I've got pattern cutting and all that kind of stuff, that's stuff that I need to really do in here. But sewing on buttons, um, hand stitching anything, all of that kind of stuff, that can be done inside the house. Or gluing rhinestones, that sort of thing, I can take inside the house and I can do in there, even if I'd rather do it out here. By grouping tasks and looking at tasks in this way, it means that I'm a lot more productive with my time because I know, so if the kids are away for a couple of hours, I know, like now, this here, anything that I need to do in the studio, that's the time that I do it. Other things that I'd like to get done maybe later on today, like towards that um, sticker pack monthly thing I was saying earlier, I can do them in the house and I can do them with kids around, but this has to be done now because the kids aren't here. A really great way to go about doing it as well is to pick one or two really small tasks that you can do every single day. So maybe on Monday you just need to email somebody. Maybe on the Tuesday you need to do a sketch for that drawing, but you don't need to do the full drawing. Just as long as you get the sketch done, it's fine. Maybe on the Wednesday then you can do the flat colouring for that sketch. Maybe on the Thursday you're going to spend a bit of time on social media doing the social media thing. Maybe on the Friday you're going to look up the prices of a couple of things so that you know, I don't know, know how much money to put aside for the next week, something like that. The Saturday you do the shading. By the end of the Sunday, you've got drawing done, you've emailed somebody, you've done social media work, you've researched stuff. Do you know, I mean, you, even if it's a really small task each day, by the end of the week, you've actually had loads done. And obviously then you can scale that to what suits you. So if you've only got half an hour, an hour a day where you can physically be working on your business, you just pick one task. Get that one task done. Every single day, you're a step closer. Speaking of steps closer, I don't have a nice segue into this bit. <laughs> um, number three, I've kind of called wear sunscreen. And that's because of this quote, which comes from Baz Luhrmann's wear sunscreen, which I think is actually just an article written by somebody else anyway. But the quote is, the race is long and in the end it's only with yourself. And that hits me in a place, man, that gets me. <laughs> the way I like to think about it, I think about myself this way. <laughs> Human beings are like 90% ego. No shade about it, it's just, we just are. It makes ourselves our biggest critics, it makes ourselves our own worst enemies, or you know, it can make us pompous assholes. But we think that people are judging our every single move, and we think that people are judging every single thing that we do. And in reality, it's not really the case. If you put a painting online, um, and you look at it and you're thinking, I mean it was great but it took me really ages and other people have put up four this week and I've only put up this one. Nobody else is thinking that when they see that. When they see that we see a beautiful painting, we don't look at it and think, should have done four? Man, imagine if there's people that think like that. I don't want to know them. Ew. That's my definition of ugly. That's my definition of an ugly person. We just want to see the beautiful work that you're doing, the amazing things that you're doing. We want to hear what you've got to say, and we don't mind if we have to wait a little longer to do so. Also start a bullet journal. Just saying. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that something in there makes sense for you or that helps you in some way. It's my first time making one like this, 
and it's really fun but also kind of scary <laughs> um so if you have anything you'd like to hear about in the future please let me know or if you feel like there's anything that i massively missed out on this also please let me know comments below that's what people say isn't it comments but mm -hmm. yeah if you don't already follow me you can find me on instagram at bujo cult i am there daily far too much <laughs> um my dms are always open you can always give me a shout uh i'm always up for having a chat and I have an Etsy store that will be linked in the description as well. I feel like I have evil worm friends. Oh. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one and studio vlogs, then subscribe. I'm here every week and apparently sometimes twice a week. Look at this. <laughs> and now I awkwardly don't know how to end things without going, love you, <laughs> like a twat. Love you. <laughs> All right, love you. Bye. <laughs>